Hey there guys, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? Hello. Question I've been thinking about right now, which is more of a, it's a deep but more of a serious question. A lot of the videos that I watch on YouTube consist of, I don't know, like just people talking about stuff, people just uh, watching funny videos, reacting, making fun of things, or you know, stuff like that. Anyways, those are the types of videos that I often watch. And I'm curious to know, if we did some stuff like that on this channel, would you guys watch it or would you not watch? Because a lot of people tell me, they're just like, hey, like, I love your personality. I think you're doing great, like, blah, 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 whatever. So I'd be curious to know, because that's, I would just be interested in trying it sometimes to see what's up, see how it goes. But let me know, leave a comment down below if you might be interested in that. That's the real question for today. Like, you know, would you actually be interested in that? Like, it's not a funny one like the other ones. We're going to continue with the funny ones in the future, but... I just wanted to see what you guys thought of that. It's been something I've really been, like it's been on my mind a lot. Just like doing, I guess, different things. And we've kind of talked about this before in the past, but like, I don't know, just like playing different games. Just like posting videos and playthroughs of other games or like reacting to funny things or like stream highlights. Like, would you guys watch that? Or like, would I spend a lot of time working on it and then it just doesn't turn into anything? You know what I mean? So that's what I'm, uh, I'm just curious about that. I'd be curious to know what you guys think about that. If you'd watch it, if you'd be like, oh, I don't know, I'd watch the first one, then kind of maybe decide after that, see if I like it. I think a lot of people will probably be that way. They'd be like, oh, yeah, like maybe like I'd have to see the first one first. So let me know what you guys think about that. Um, I do want to start putting out content like that because I think it would be a lot of fun. And I think if you guys gave it a chance, you would actually really like it. So that said, we're going to actually get into more uh, more stuff. I got a bunch of new pops. So in case if you guys want to see any of them or if you have any comments about them, Leave a comment about that. Let me know if you guys want to see more of those. And uh, yeah, maybe we could do a video just on those one day as the collection grows. I have more coming in the mail still. The All video right. today is just going to be going along with the counter series and just kind of like what that looks like and what, you know, what team we're going to be countering today. Um, I actually haven't decided. So let's decide which team we want to counter today. I've decided. We're going to talk about countering the AIM teams. I have really struggled myself to figure out how to properly counter certain aim teams i usually just end up picking a team that punches down on them because i mean you pretty much a lot of times unless it's like the hyper synergy teams like phoenix or brotherhood or something a lot of times you can just you can punch down on like anybody and like if it's enough so that's usually what i end up doing in war and stuff like that so i'm gonna give you like the proper proper counters we're gonna talk about them like talk about why it works how it works what to do etc you guys know what to expect by now so you want to counter aim right you're playing these teams you're like man i don't really know how to beat this they're kind of frustrating how do we do this how do we beat aim especially in war because you see them a lot on defense and war at least i do you might be saying man can i punch up on this team what's the best way to do this and it's tougher in war because one of their main counters is always set on defense. And you might already be figuring this out. But, so let's just talk about AIM really quickly. What you have is Scientist Supreme, Graviton, AIM Security, AIM Monstrosity, and then one other character. I have often seen that be AIM Assaulter. Sometimes it's AIM Researcher. It's never really AIM Infector. But it's usually between Researcher and Assaulter. I typically stick with Assaulter, but I see why people would use Aim Researcher as well. I just didn't want to commit all of the resources to Researcher. Which one's better? I think it's preference, might be who you're facing, whatever. What do I always say? Whoever you have better red stars on. Simple facts, simple facts. So this team does a lot of debuffs, they do a lot of stuns. All kinds of just craziness. They're all villains, which is going to be important later. When you have these teams, like, they just pretty much, they get going and they just, like, stun you and they power through with debuffs, gives them extra damage, all that stuff. It, it gets a little crazy. And so the first team that is a really good counter to them, as you could guess, let's drum roll. Ready? You better be drum rolling on your desk. It's the Defenders with Punisher, who's not pictured. The reason why, if it's not already pretty obvious, is that you have a lot of cleansing on this team between Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, Luke Cage. Um, Iron Fist and Luke Cage cleanse themselves before you get in the comments trying to fight me. Jessica Jones cleanses everybody. Now you need the T4s on her special here to clear everything, which I think is pretty important when it comes to this matchup. Though I think you could probably get away with this, but this would be pretty helpful in some scenarios. Then you have Daredevil who beats 
the crap out of villains. He just smashes them, smashes them good. So he's just kind of already set up to do better against villains. Okay, so Punisher is the big boy on campus, right? So Punisher comes out here and he just, woof, you know him, man. He does the big damage, big, big, big damage, especially to the villains. He does the big damage to the villains. That's why it makes them a perfect counter for aim because they're all villains. They do a lot of debuffs. And what does this team excel in? This team excels in cleansing and damaging against villains. So this is gonna be your number one team to use. Now the reason why this is hard is because a lot of times in war, which is when you're worried about countering aim, you got this team and they can't, like there's nothing that they can do, right? Because you're like, oh, like they're on defense. They're always on defense. Everybody always has defenders on defense. So kind of a way around that is that another team that you know you can kind of break up teams is what i'm getting at so like if you needed to i don't necessarily recommend this but if you had groot on a team or if you took ronin out of kree you could put like ronin on a team i don't necessarily recommend that at all but if you had to like just like crazy situation that would be a way to do it now we've got another counter here that i think works a lot better or well not necessarily works better but is more uh realistic and manageable based on the fact that a lot of times defenders are going to be on defense. You might be seeing these same teams and it's like, well, how am I supposed to beat them? Like I just could punch down with a really strong team, but like, you don't want to do that. You really don't want to do that. But we have Fantastic Four and obviously, I think that this is pretty straightforward why this team works. You guys may not, but I am thinking for me, it's, it's pretty straightforward because Invisible Woman, she, with this ability, she just, she gets rid of everything. She gets rid of everything, and it's easy, right? And uh, you get some a little bit of immunity out there on your highest health ally. You get the deflex out there. But mainly, it gets rid of almost all of the negative effects. Of course, not all of them, but it gets rid of most of them. And then it's pretty easy, right? So from there, then you just go in and you beat them up. If they don't have, if they put the negative effects out there, then they don't have them anymore. That's a big part of why that team does extra damage. A lot of the abilities are based on doing extra damage based on the amount of debuffs that the enemy team has. And so if there's no debuffs or they can't get any debuffs, then this team just goes in and they take off. Now, obviously Namor is the good fifth in this team. I don't use him there. Mine's really, really weak, and I just really don't. I don't. I can't be bothered to invest the gold in him because he's so bad outside of war. I really have to invest in characters right now that are just more versatile because I just can't afford to invest in characters that only work in one place. I need them to work everywhere. So that said, this team with a fifth, you can sub in whoever you want. Namor is good. Namor is definitely a good one if you powered him up, invested in him, and you don't really have to. I mean, obviously, it's going to be relevant to your power level, and uh, I like Thanos, but a lot of people use Thanos with other teams, but I really like Thanos with this. Not, again, I've talked about this before, not because of the energy, because the energy doesn't really matter in this team, but because of just the undispellable taunt that he has is really, really, really just helpful i mean obviously it's dispellable but very hard to dispel taunt is very helpful on this team because mr fantastic and human torch are both pretty squishy maybe that's just specifically mine because of the just obviously you can see that i mean they're two star and uh level 60 and i mean they're not like not got a lot of power they don't have a lot of health they can be one tribe pretty easily but then if you can't get to them they can actually steal I'm, I'm interested to see human torch at higher levels i think would be devastating because he deals pretty good damage now at the levels that he's at as well as thing and uh, Mr. Fantastic more for utility, but that would be, that's something I'm looking forward to. That's a side note. This team can beat up on aim, and a lot of times with this team, it's more of a punch down though, to be honest. It doesn't work as well as defenders because you don't get the extra bonus villain damage. I think that this team definitely works, but you probably want to be a little bit stronger. Maybe, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe around the relevant power levels. So oftentimes for me, what I will do is I like to go for Graviton first when I fight these teams because he is just, I don't know, he just seems like, oh, if you take out Graviton, the rest is easy peasy. But I believe that that is a mistake. I believe that it's Scientist Supreme who you need to take out because she revives people like crazy. And so if you take out Graviton, he might just get revived and then you might have security taunting and then you can't get to him. So you just wasted everything. Scientist Supreme is the first person you have to take out because she also does so much healing. And I'll tell you that uh, I've lost matches because I haven't gone for her first. I've lost quite a few matches for not going for her first. So I definitely a thousand percent recommend that you go after Scientist Supreme 
first when you're fighting this team. After Scientist Supreme, I recommend Graviton. Then after that, it's super easy cleanup. If you don't think you're going to be able to kill Scientist Supreme, stun her. And that way she won't do revives or anything else like that. As far as my understanding, I actually don't know if that is the case or not. Someone let me know in the comments if she can still revive when she's stunned. And you just have to make sure you take her out because she is like the crazy, like she's so good. And it's like her and Graviton are like equally so important for this team. So, so, so important for this team. Now, a team that you don't want to use ever against AIM is Brotherhood. So we should know by now that Brotherhood, like they completely counter Brotherhood. And that's because just the way that they do with debuffs, you don't, you simply put just don't want to use any teams that inflict a lot of debuffs because they don't care and they just flip them and, or they don't flip them, but they just send them back to you. So definitely do not use this team at all against them because it just won't work. They are literally built to counter. So I just wanted to include that on the end. Do not use Brotherhood to fight against AIM. There's probably other teams as well. Just don't use anything that's debuff heavy. I would not recommend Supernatural either because they do a good bit of debuffs and it's not going to work. Now you could probably, again, with either of these teams, you could certainly punch down by a lot, but that would be a waste of these teams of like Brotherhood and Supernatural. I don't recommend it. So neither of those teams, like I'm sure people will be in comments like, oh, like Supernatural beats AIM. I'm just like, yeah, I'm sure that they do, but there's better teams or easier teams that you can use to do it, if that makes sense. That's all I've got for you guys today. I hope that this video was helpful. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are not already. Uh, we're trying to just, we're doing it. You know what I'm saying? So thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like on this video. It really helps me out a lot and leave a comment with any of the things that we talked about today. I would appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. You guys deserve it.